Good evening. I'm Spot on Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and welcome to my newest video. And over the next couple of videos, what I plan to do is do a 2022 20, 23 winter in review. So this is going to be part one uh, of the video. Um, this is really designed to have a running record of how the winter season was. Uh, I'm really, really fascinated by the winter season and all the dynamics involved, you know, from climate drivers to um, the particular long wave patterns and those potent short waves. Um, so we're going to take a look tonight at part one of the 22-23 winter in review. Now I'm going to do an overall review of the winter season up front and then I will get into the December 2022 review. And then I will resume part two, kicking it off with January of 2023. But again, this is designed to be an archived record of how the particular winter was for the United States, as well as for the Hampton Roads, Virginia cities. So let's get right into tonight's winter review. So I'm going to summarize things first, the overall winter summary here, and just go down the line. The 22-23 uh, winter was the third consecutive La Nina winter. This is only the second time in recorded history that we've seen what's known as a triple dip La Nina event uh, in which we've had three consecutive La Nina winters. So that's something to consider. And many of the forecasts issued by the um, Climate Prediction Center for their winter outlook pretty much favored a typical La Nina looking pattern for the United States. And that did live up to you know, pretty good expectations overall. Now, unlike the past two La Nina winters, uh, we had measurable snowfall, in particular here in um, the Hampton Road cities of Virginia. Um, this particular winter, however, this third in a row, the third La Nina winter, this had zero snowfall accumulation for Hampton Road cities. Now, outside of a very few cold periods, uh, mean temperatures were very mild, typically in excess of 6 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in January, and then in excess of 7 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in February. So, you know, outside those very cold periods, which were few and far between, it was a very, very mild winter period. Now, the upper air pattern, I'm going to show you some of those charts and what they look like throughout the various winter months. December, January, and February, but the upper air pattern featured more of a persistent upper level ridge across the eastern U.S. and an upper level trough across the western U.S. That was a very, very persistent pattern. Now the main storm track, due to that pattern, generally stretched from the U.S. southwest up to the upper Midwest along a major baroclinic zone. So the, the baroclinic zone, uh, that zone of greatest temperature contrast, the zone at which you know, the, the transition from a trough to the upper ridge occurs, that's, that baroclinic zone in the storm track generally stayed well off to the northwest of the mid-Atlantic in the winter of 22-23. Now, the combination of the La Nina plus a persistently negative Pacific North American or PNA pattern, in addition to warmer MJO phases, the Madden Julian oscillation phases during the heart of the winter season, it was responsible for the milder temps across the east. There was no shaking the pattern with all of these climate drivers generally in favor for milder eastern conditions. Now the polar vortex, the stratospheric polar vortex, it did remain quite weak in early to middle portions of December uh, with occasional what's known as stretching events or elongation of the vortex and subsequent colder periods in the eastern US um, with those stretching events. However, a more major sudden stratospheric warming event occurred between 14 and 20 February with surface effects felt uh, in the form of below normal temperatures into March, specifically the 8 to 15 March 2023 period. So, um, you know, the vortex was weak, it had its elongation periods, even going back to November, there was an elongation period of the vortex. Um, and then there was another um, elongation period into the early and middle portions of December. And so this resulted in some periods of below normal temperatures, but they were fairly quick hitting shots of cold air across the eastern U.S., including the mid-Atlantic region. 
Now, I also want to mention before I move on that my winter summary covers the meteorological winter months from 1 December to 28 February. So I'm not stretching this all the way out to the vernal equinox to you know, the March 20th time period. I'm considering this winter review to consist of December, January, and February. All right, so now let's continue on our discussion with the overall review of the winter 2022-23. The common theme for the upper air pattern was an upper level ridge. Now, let me go ahead and get my pointer out for this discussion here as we start getting into some of these charts. All right, so this right here on the left, this graphic, this is a 500 millibar um, height anomaly, heights and height anomaly chart. Whenever you see a purple coloring, that indicates much below normal uh, upper level heights at 500 millibar level or 18,000 feet above the Earth's surface. Whenever you see the brown coloring, the orange coloring, that's indicative of an upper level ridge uh, well above normal heights at 500 millibars or 18,000 feet above the ground. This was a pattern that would not shake. It would not change. Now, we notice where that ridge axis is. It's just too far to the west. Um, a lot of times it would extend up here into the Kodiak, Alaska area and also up into the eastern Aleutians, and then even sometimes a little bit further westward up into the Bering Sea during the duration of the winter. And then what happened was is you consistently got a downstream trough, an anomalously deep trough, a closed upper level low, um, position off the U.S. west coast, and yeah, we don't see the eastern U.S. or the mid-Atlantic in this particular cutoff graphic. Um, but I will just tell you that there was an upstream ridge, or rather a downstream ridge, from this deep trough along the U.S. west coast. So this was a very, very wet winter for the state of California. Um, and typically you don't really see that in La Nina years. So this was kind of an oddity with a La Nina winter that we saw such heavy precipitation coming into portions of California, specifically the Sierra Nevada, um, really, really replenished their snowpack over the course of the winter. Um, the last report I saw was over 600, uh, I think it was over 600 inches. It was quite a bit of snow in the Sierra Nevada. Uh, restoring a much needed or desperate snowpack. Um, so very unusual conditions, a lot of heavy rain events in the San Francisco, the central California area as well during the winter season. But this pattern with this persistent stagnant pattern, this ridge never really pushed east much. Uh, that didn't put that basically what that means is if the ridge stays further west, that trough stays parked along the US west coast in association with the very strong negative Pacific North American pattern or negative PNA. So I just wanted to really get this feel for what happened in the upper air pattern at 500 millibars. Ridge into the Aleutians, downstream trough into the over the west coast of the United States, and then another downstream of that, there was a ridge across the eastern U.S. Um, so longer duration cold with this type of pattern just was non-existent across the mid-Atlantic. We did see occasional intrusions or incursions of Arctic air, which occurred across the eastern U.S. during the winter overall. Uh, due, again, as I mentioned earlier, to the elongations or stretching out of the stratospheric polar vortex. Uh, but these were short in duration. Now, we did see a favorable upper air pattern for eastern cold, even snow, in the month of December, specifically mid to late December. And everybody was just blasting stuff all over social media, uh, including myself, you know, um, looking at a negative NAO or a strong Greenland block. Uh, very strongly negative North Atlantic Oscillation NAO. You know, in most years, that's going to produce above normal snowfall, specifically for the Mid-Atlantic area, uh, as well as you get anomalously higher heights um, at the higher latitudes over eastern Canada, over Greenland, that generally tends to allow the dislodging of colder air beneath that ridging or anomalously higher heights, the higher latitudes. And really, it just never really materialized. Now, we did have one brief really bitterly cold air mass that came down around the holiday time period in late December uh, in association with that strongly west-based negative NAO. But guess what? Um, as we headed towards late December, just after the Christmas holiday, um, what happened was a roaring Pacific, a very, very intense Pacific jet stream occurred, very zonal west to east. Uh, it developed, it came basically crashing into southern and central California and basically extended all the way the jet stream, the Pacific jet from the west coast to the east coast. And it really, really pushed that anomalously bitterly cold Arctic air off the east coast. Um, definitely by the 29th of December and New Year's was very mild again for um, parts of the mid-Atlantic. Um, there were major atmospheric river events with such a strong, anomalously strong jet stream from the Pacific. 
Um, this pushed copious amounts of moisture in California, resulted in a lot of flooding over um, the December time period and even extending further down the line into January. There were some monster storms off the coast uh, of, the, of, of the U.S., off the West Coast in particular. Uh, and then for the East, meanwhile, with the milder than normal temps for the winter, we saw a major snowfall deficit from I-95 right up the coast from the Mid-Atlantic to New England and, and, and then also along the coastal sections of the Mid-Atlantic. Here are some graphics to kind of drill home the points here tonight uh, from the winter review of 2022-23. Um, here are the, um, this is December to February temperature rankings, and this goes back to 1895-96. Uh, look at the oranges and yellows across the eastern U.S., anywhere east of the Mississippi River. Um, the lighter yellow indicates top 25 warmest winters. Um, the lighter, that's like lighter or a little bit darker brown here indicates the top 10 warmest winters. And when you get into the red territory here, now we're talking top five warmest winters. Uh, so a lot of New England, Boston, New York, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, the snowbirds were angry across the east. Um, and, you know, <laughs> nobody who wants winter weather really appreciated this past winter, that's for sure. Now go out to the western U.S., it's a different story. Now we're talking about the top 25 and top 10 coldest winters for the Intermountain West, Eastern Colorado, Wyoming, on over to Nevada. Even into California, look at this. Look how much cooler than normal the temperatures were across the West as that upper level trough was the dominant feature. I could draw this out right now based on what I see here in the temperature rankings. Ridge in the East, trough in the West. And then over here on the right, we're looking at the winter 22-23. Uh, December through February precipitation rankings, same time frame, we're going back to 1895-96. And uh, a brown coloring, a brown shading indicates drier than normal. Um, we're talking top 50 and top 25 driest winters uh, across Texas, across Florida for sure. Look at this, a top 10 driest for areas near Orlando, for example, in central Florida. And even some of that lighter shading extended from the coastal Carolinas, coastal Virginia, right on up to southern New Jersey. We're talking about a top 50 driest type of winter. And look at where all the above normal precip occurred, folks, the wettest. Right here in the green coloring and the darker blue coloring. You see the connection here? California, Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, Northwest Iowa, right on up into southern Minnesota. Minneapolis, you cashed in big time this winter with a lot of snow, and then also up into Wisconsin. So this was the zone right here, which was much above normal as far as being wetter than normal um, in the blues and the greens. And again, look at how, how you just don't see much of that across the mid-Atlantic specifically. Now you do see a little bit of wetter conditions across New England further up to the north. Um, but in general, it was a very dry and very mild winter for Florida, for example, if you live down there. Uh, just really impressive stuff. Now, let's take a look at the snowfall departures from average. Now, this map I'm showing you just went out from October 1st, 2022 to February 15th, 2023. So it didn't completely encapsulate the period of discussion in the video tonight, uh, which I go all the way up to February 28th. Um, there was a few more snowstorms up here in New England um, the last couple weeks of February, uh, which might have changed us slightly up here, the color scheme. But in general, anywhere where you're brown, especially the darker browns, well below normal snowfall for the winter season. Look at this coloring here. Again, Minnesota, you cashed in above normal snowfall. Um, Nebraska, above normal snowfall. North Dakota, above normal snowfall. Parts of southeast Montana and Wyoming. Um, the Rocky Mountains and the ski resorts out here, they love the winter. Uh, they got nice snows out here for all the skiers. Um, and then look at this. Look at the Sierra Nevada here in California. This is just crazy. This is a snowfall departure through the mid uh, part of February 2023 in which there was plus 72 inches, 72 inches or more above normal across the Sierras. Um, so, and then there's a breakdown down here. States with the biggest average departures. Connecticut, you're the grand prize winner. Now this might have changed slightly again over the last two weeks of February. I didn't account for that here. But Connecticut at this point in time through 15 February was almost 28 inches below normal. Rhode Island 26 inches below normal. Massachusetts 23.1 inches below normal. West Virginia, I mean they shut down some of the ski resorts out there early um, because of the lack of snow and the milder temperatures. Uh, West Virginia almost 22 inches below normal. Pennsylvania 19 inches below normal. But here's your positives over here. 
Utah, almost uh, up to 18 inches above normal for snowfall for the season. California, plus 14.5 inches. Colorado, Wyoming, and Nevada all cashed in on the pattern because that storm track in that Bear Clinic zone was right along here. This is where the coldest air remained back in the western U.S. and the northern plains and that very cold Arctic air remained in that position. Milder air associated with the ridge of the east. That battle zone or Bear Clinic area, that is where the storms tracked and that's why you see to the northwest of those surface lows that above normal snowfall. Looking at the national snowfall analysis, now this was the accumulation across the United States. Now this does cover the period from September 30th, 2022 to March 1st of 2023. Um, just showing you, here's the, here's the uh, scale by the way here. Um, it does range on the lower end numbers there um, in inches, but then it goes to feet rather, briefly, rather quickly. Um, look at this, okay. Look at the Sierra Nevada here, all right. That dark purple coloring equates to 30 to 40 feet of snow. See this? They got hammered over the winter, 22, 23 winter. Um, and then even all of these um, oranges and the bright maroon colors, um, you're looking, you know, for example, Minnesota, four to six feet above normal. Um, up in northern New England, you did get above normal. Not, I wouldn't say above normal. We are looking at accumulations after all. So let me correct myself here. The maroon coloring here indicates the accumulations of four to six feet. All right, the um, northern New England area also four to six feet in the far northern portions. Um, the blue coloring indicating a total snowfall accumulation for the season, uh, generally in the order of two inches up to a foot. Um, and then look, I mean, it just, there wasn't much here in the east. Look at I-95, Virginia up to DC. Where was it? Just not much accumulation for the winter season. Now let's examine December in particular, and that will basically cover our part one in the winter review video here. Um, let's take a look. So what I did is I took snippets at the 500 millibar level um, for various dates throughout the month of December. Um, if we look here on the left, the green associated with upper level troughs and mostly low heights, and the orange coloring indicating above normal heights associated with ridges. So initially here on the 1st of December, you know, we had a nice little trough digging into the eastern U.S. Um, that was an association, I believe, with one of those elongated elongation or stretching of the polar vortex. Um, in eastern North America, and you know, the subtropical ridge was flat. You know, look at look at the height lines here, the the height contours, generally running west to east. So we don't really see a major amplification of the ridge at this point in early December. You see a nice deep trough there off the Pacific Northwest as well, associated with stormy conditions and below normal temps. Right now, this was the player that really took over in the month of December, and everybody was just in a happy state if you like snow uh, and we'll, we'll examine this particular area here uh, into Greenland as we go through the the charts um, but yeah this this was the area to pay attention to in the month of December of uh, 2022 um, so generally what you got let's go over here to the right side now this right graph let's talk about it so we still have a trough digging from the Gulf of Alaska just in the northeastern Pacific off the west coast um, and we do see now a ridge by the 8th of December. This, this map is 8 December. See how things have changed? The orange color has got brighter. That mean, indicates that we have uh, much more above normal heights um, at 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. And then this brown coloring. Look at this thing. This was the monster ridge it developed uh, by 8 December 2022 across the North Atlantic into Greenland. See this? All right, so this is gonna be associated with that negative North Atlantic oscillation. Now let's follow this. Let's go to 15 December here on the left. Look at the brown coloring here. So now we've got the brown shading over um, Greenland and then extending a little bit further to the west of Greenland now. Uh, now it's going into parts of Eastern Canada. We see a deep trough off New England over the North Atlantic we see another deep trough over the central U.S. by the 15th of December. And now we see the development of another upper level ridge and above normal heights extending northward into the Northeast Pacific and the Gulf of Alaska. So we got two major high height centers, Gulf of Alaska, and then um, towards Hudson Bay in Canada and Eastern Canada, basically. And then beneath that, we have um, some cooler troughs indicated by these green colors, okay? Uh, by the 15th of December, we still have some weak ridging occurring into the mid-Atlantic, by the way. All right. Now, look at this. 22 December on the right. 
look at this. That ridge is still there. That negative NAO is still there. It's a west face negative NAO because the higher heights are to the west of Greenland. So, yep, there it is. And beneath that anomalously high height center, uh, we do have a little bit of ridging still extending into New England. Uh, we do see troughing, though, now moving into parts of Montana and the northern plain states by this green shading here. And then we see another monster ridge develop off of the west coast of the United States, extending all the way up in the northeast Pacific, all the way up. Look at this thing. This thing goes basically all the way to the polar area, the north pole area. See this white shading up here? Just extremely anomalously high heights all the way up to the north pole area. All right, that is the precursor to that majorly bitterly cold Arctic outbreak around the Christmas holiday. This was the start of it here. This was the reflection or signature of what was to come. All right. So the negative NAO, usually that's going to allow for the colder temperatures and lower heights to take over across the eastern portions of North America. All right. Um, and it did happen, but it just happened so briefly. Now, let's take a look at temperature anomalies. This is going to be interesting. December 2022 temperature anomalies. This was the 1st of December. Notice how we had a little layer or a thin little ribbon of above normal temperatures from Florida right on up to portions of North Carolina, Virginia, Jersey, on up to New England. Uh, up in New England, we had um, on the 1st of December, we had temperatures on the order of 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. The green coloring, though, is over the central U.S., working its way eastward to the Midwest, uh, where temperatures on the 1st of December were on the order of 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. Moving over here on the right-hand side, we move ahead now to the 8th of December, 2022, and look at all the mild air from Texas all the way up the eastern seaboard. This would be the theme of the winter. It really would over time, especially in January and February. This was just a theme we could not shake. You see the below normal temperatures up here in the Minnesota and North Dakota. Um, temperatures are 14 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. So we've got some very cold, bitterly cold air up here in the upper Midwest by the 8th. But the east, the southern U.S., everybody's going, oh, yeah, it is a mild, mild December. We do have some below normal temperatures indicated by the green colorings here. Um, 8 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit below normal out in the west on the 8th of December. Now, let's continue moving forward. This is the 15th of December, the temperature anomalies. And now you're seeing a little bit of a blue shading there from um, North Carolina right on up to Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York State. Um, so you got some cooler temperatures, cooler than normal temps. Uh, not bitterly cold at this point on the 15th of December, just on the order of three to six degrees Fahrenheit below normal. Nothing major, you know, unusual for mid-December really, slightly below normal. And then to the west of that, across the Midwest, the upper Midwest, we got temperatures on the order of 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above normal from Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, into eastern Dakota, and even up here. Now look at these temperatures up here in Canada. Well above normal. Well above normal. This is the scale over here on the right in degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so for this light white, or white shading here in central Canada, we're talking 32 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in central Canada in mid-December. You see the below normal temps here over the western U.S., the Rockies down in the desert southwest. Look what happens over here in the graphic on the right. Look at this purple coloring. Now we're talking about a major, major Arctic outbreak. Siberian Express time. Hop aboard the train. 22 December um, from the Dakotas, western Nebraska, eastern Wyoming, uh, into Montana, into western Canada. Ooh, we are talking 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit below normal below normal temperatures, 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit in late December with a low sun angle and very short amounts of daylight hours. That's an impressive cold outbreak. This is a bitterly cold Arctic air mass. Everybody started talking about 1983 in December around Christmas. Uh, everybody started comparing and, um, other analogs to this potential Arctic outbreak coming in for the holiday season. And look at here, across the eastern U.S., up the eastern seaboard, Slightly below normal, nothing major at this point on the 22nd of December. We are going to delve deeper into the Arctic outbreak around Christmas here in a moment. Here it is. Um, here is what the surface chart looked like. Right, so H, the blue surface high pressures. Uh, the red L indicates surface low pressures. And there you got your uh, potpourri of frontal systems 
blue with the triangles, uh, blue filled in triangles indicate cold fronts. Uh, when you have the um, red semicircle lines, that indicates warm fronts. Um, and so <laughs> these high pressure readings, the barometric pressure associated with this high pressure over Montana, this, this chart, by the way, the surface chart was on 22 December, showing a 1057 millibar high pressure system over Great Falls, Montana. All right, that's some serious cold. Another way I could tell it's serious cold is these black style lines are lines of equal barometric pressure, okay, at the surface. And look at how they're kinking, how they're bending like this. And look how tightly packed these lines are. Every line represents a pressure reading. Um, every line indicates four millibar intervals. And so we are, with cold air, the, the colder it is, the more dense it is. And the greater these um, isobars be packed, the closer they'll be together, indicating a lot of bitterly cold wind on the front side coming straight from the Arctic. Um, and this is this is quite, I'm going to show you some information there on the right here in a minute. Some of these temperature drops associated with this Arctic front, um, which by the 22nd was located from um, southeastern Illinois down just southeast of St. Louis to the Little Rock area and all the way down just north of um, Houston. All right. This was your Arctic front right here on the 22nd of December. There was a weak area of low pressure out ahead of the Arctic front uh, there over the Carolinas. It's just 10, 12 millibar low, nothing major. Um, so we did have some rain and moisture ahead of the Arctic frontal passage across the east on the 22nd of December. But this is some impressive stuff, folks. You get 10, 50 plus millibar high pressure systems in late December. We are talking bitterly cold air. And here's some interesting facts over here on the right. December 21st to 25th, we saw a powerful Arctic front. It wreaked havoc across much of the U.S. It brought heavy rains ahead of it and then brought snow on its backside here in the blue coloring across the Midwest on the 22nd. Ice, very slippery roads, high winds. These winds pack quite a punch. Um, I can remember in southeastern Virginia after this thing blew through, uh, we had wind gusts of 50 miles per hour. Uh, I literally observed the fence, the nearby fence, basically get blown over. It was quite the punch of wind. Now, the National Weather Service reported that some 240 million people, more than two thirds of the entire U.S. population, they were, un were under winter weather warnings and advisories on December 23rd. Um, here's some incredible facts. Dillon, Montana reported a temperature drop of 26 degrees in just three minutes. Casper, Wyoming, temperature drop occurred from 27 degrees down to eight degrees above zero in just eight minutes. And then to negative six degrees Fahrenheit hour later, that's air temperature. Um, so from 27 degrees to negative six degrees Fahrenheit, impressive. Cheyenne, Wyoming, temperature change from 43 degrees to three degrees above zero in just 30 minutes. And that's their largest ever half hour drop. Denver, Colorado, temperature drop occurred from 42 degrees Fahrenheit right on down to 18 degrees Fahrenheit in just seven minutes. Uh, it cool, the cooling was uh, five degrees Fahrenheit an hour, uh, the rate of cooling, with a wind chill of 23 below zero. And then the 37 degree one hour temperature drop for Denver is likely a new record for the city. So when this thing blew through, you did know it. You knew it right away, believe me. Here are some of the temperature anomalies associated with the bitterly cold Christmas holiday period. This is the 23rd of December, uh, purple coloring here. Okay, so these are max temperatures and min temperatures on the left of each of these graphics. Max temp upper left, min temp bottom left. Um, what I want you to pay attention to are the two on the right of each of these graphics. Um, these two right here for the 23rd of December, these are temperature anomalies in degrees Fahrenheit. So the, the high temperature anomaly on the 23rd of December was any, anywhere from 34 to 36 degrees Fahrenheit below normal from Illinois right on down to Louisiana. The low temperature anomaly for the 23rd of December was nearly 32 degrees Fahrenheit below normal across the Mid-South. Memphis, Tennessee, Louisville, Kentucky, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, Little Rock, Arkansas. And then over here on the right was the 24th of December. December showing you the anomalies. Look at the purple shading. Max temperature anomalies on the order of 20 to 28 degrees Fahrenheit below normal all the way to the East Coast, all the way down to Florida and the Gulf Coast. You're not out of it either. And Texas.
impressive stuff. Now, 25th of December, these were the high temperature anomalies, the upper right, low temperature anomalies here in the bottom right. Still, the cold continued, still very bitterly cold on Christmas Day. Uh, I remember waking up, I believe it was Christmas morning, it might have been, it might have been Christmas Eve morning, um, but the temperature was 12 degrees Fahrenheit above zero here in Hampton Roads. Impressive, with no snow cover, complete bare ground. Over here on the right, showing the temperature anomalies, the high temperature anomalies. See the purple coloring continues on the order of 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit below normal for the 26th of December. So you're looking at this and you're saying, ooh, we have a strongly negative NAO. Wow, that favors snowfall for the Mid-Atlantic. We might actually see a white Christmas this year. That's what you were thinking. And you're thinking, this is just the beginning of all the fun and games for the upcoming winter season for the East, right? You're like, this is a good, this is a good sign. This could be a very interesting winter. Okay. What happened here? Rapid warming occurred across the East in late December, early January. And that was due to that very strong Pacific jet stream, which blew from California right across to the East Coast. And that rapid flattened jet stream look pushed all the Arctic air that you saw here around the Christmas holiday offshore and into the Atlantic and replaced it with much milder air. I mean, by the 29th of December, we're looking at temperature anomalies for high temperatures on the order of 28 degrees Fahrenheit above normal for the Midwest on the 29th of December. The low temperature anomalies in the bottom right here for the 29th of December uh, from 20 to 24 degrees Fahrenheit above normal for the low temperatures from Houston, Texas, right through St. Louis to Chicago, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, on up to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Over here on the right, this is the temperature anomalies for the 2nd of January to start the new year. Look at the brown coloring. These are your high temperature anomalies, well above normal, 20 to 22 degrees Fahrenheit above normal from the Gulf Coast to the Mid-Atlantic. And then look at this. This is the low temperature anomalies just as ridiculous. I'm gonna show you some specific numbers for these, by the way. Just give me a minute. Now, let's take a look at the teleconnections in December, 2022. Um, the um, blue bars, when they're below this zero line, that indicates a negative condition. And whenever these blue bars are above the zero line, it indicates a positive condition or positive phase. Um, so what we have for the month of December, I did different snippets here. Uh, this was 1 December, the middle graphic was 9 December, and the far right graphic was 22 December. Notice what happens over time with the Arctic Oscillation in December. Um, as we had the strong Greenland block, the very strong negative NAO, and look at how strongly negative the AO went from 1 December all the way through about the 20th of December. See these blue bars, how much below normal they are, below that line? Um, so we had strong upper level blocking in the higher latitudes in the Greenland and Eastern Canada, as I've already discussed. So the Arctic Oscillation dropped sharply negative by the middle portion of December. You're like, this is going to be an amazing winter in the East, isn't it? Look at the North Atlantic Oscillation. All right. Negative as well, which we would expect that to be negative here. Um, the Really, the first week of December, towards the end of the first week of December, right on into the middle part of December, the NAO really took on a negative character or a negative phase. Um, and that makes sense based on what the upper air pattern looked like with that strong Greenland blocking. What about the Pacific North American pattern in December 2022? Um, let's see what happens here. Um, it's going to be negative. Okay, it's going to be negative from late November right on into mid December. The PNA was negative. It then changed to a positive phase at the end of December. When we saw the Pacific jet come roaring in from the West Coast and extend all the way across to the East Coast, we started seeing these kind of anomalously warm temperature anomalies for the East. Guess what the PNA did? It went positive. In, in a positive PNA, you would associate more with um, ridging over the um, Northeastern Pacific and Western Canada and the Western US. Um, so that really wouldn't equate. We would expect this to be a negative PNA if. We had milder temperatures in the east. So things were a little bit out of sync as far as the climate drivers go into late December. What about the Madden-Julian oscillation in December? How did this play a role in our overall pattern in December 2022? 
Well, I'd like to use this diagram right here, um, and it just kind of breaks it down nicely. Um, whenever you have MJO phases five, six, and seven, expect a warmer winter. Whenever you have the MJO phases eight, one, and two, and even in the portions of three, um, winter and spring, it's generally colder than normal. So what happened here? I did two snippets. I did the December 1st to the 15th, and I did a December 16th to December 30th. Um, so the green line representing the average of all the ensemble members here for the Jeffs, uh, MJ was mainly in the inner circle here through mid-December into the null phase. How was it over here? Uh, went weekly to pot, uh, phase four there, which would be um, a warmer phase for the winter, but it wasn't very strongly negative. It was mainly hanging out around the inner circle here. That indicates a null phase. What does a null phase mean for the MJO in the winter? That basically means very little in the way of impact to the U.S. weather pattern. So this was December's MJO. What about the sea surface temperature anomalies for December? I did a snippet here in the upper left, December 1st. Bottom right is December 22nd. So they're about three weeks apart. Just to kind of show you the changes in the temperature anomalies, the water temperatures. The blue coloring here, plain as day. We have ourselves a La Nina pattern. Uh, colder than normal temps extending from the west coast of South America right on into portions of the um, central um, equatorial area. So La Nina's signature is, is clear there, and then that signature remained right on into 22 December. So we really didn't see a let up of the La Nina, okay, in December. Uh, we did have above normal temperatures just south of the Aleutian Islands there. Um, we had some slightly below normal temperature, water temperatures there across the Gulf of Alaska along coastal sections of western Canada down off the Pacific Northwest as well by late December. And then the Gulf of Mexico was above normal water temperatures right on up the southeast coast. What about the Nino 3.4 water temp anomaly specifically for December 2022? Here is the snippet from two, the 2nd of December. The bottom right is a snippet from the 22nd of December, again about three weeks apart. And overall, you kind of see the ray trace here, the blue dotted line, showing that the water temperatures on the 2nd of December uh, were about one degree Celsius below normal across that Nino 3.4 region. Um, and then down here in the bottom right, by the 22nd of December, uh, we do see that the, you know, the La Nina, yeah, here, December 8th, right to December 22nd, it actually, the water temperatures were actually colder than one degree Celsius below normal. Um, so that, that kind of increased the La Nina temporarily to a moderate strength by late December. That by this point, uh, we went from minus 1.02 degrees Celsius in the Nino 3.4 region on December 2nd, all the way down to minus 1.07 degrees Celsius by the 22nd of December. Now, let's take a look at the stratospheric polar vortex in December. This gets interesting. Uh, this snippet here on the left is, um, this graphic is for the 1st of December, middle graphic is for the 18th of December, and the far right graphic is for the 30th of December. Look at these white, solid, solid white lines indicate heights uh, up at 30 millibars above the surface. And just pay attention to the shape, the shape of these solid white lines. Look over here on the far left, the graphic here for 1 December. We see some stretching out of the stratospheric polar vortex um, from, um, that looks like it's around Greenland, extending eastward towards west or northwestern Europe. Okay. Here in the middle, by the 18th of December, look at the stretching, and it's like a rubber band here, um, from the North Pole all the way across the North Atlantic over Greenland. Uh, this is, look at that white, look at those white lines there, those white saddle lines indicating a stretching out or elongation appearance of the polar vortex in the stratosphere. And look over here on the far right, by the 30th of December, look how more symmetrical or circular in shape these solid white lines are. This is indicating a, a stratospheric polar vortex that is strengthening. It's getting stronger. See this, see this circular shape here? It's less stretched out. It's displaced here on the 18th, slightly displaced off the pole on the 18th of December and elongated. But over here, by the, tw by the 30th of December over here on the right, it's actually more circular. So we saw a drastic strengthening from the 1st of December to the 30th of December of the stratospheric polar vortex. And when you're seeing the strengthening, you're thinking to yourself, geez, I just, we just had a beautiful pattern with a negative NAO and the vortex wasn't very strong. Okay, that's two checks for colder weather in the east. Um, 
But uh oh, now it's getting stronger by 30 December, which would totally negate. Um, that would indicate more warmer conditions in the middle latitudes. Okay, that's the end of part one of the 2022-23 winter review. Um, in the next part, I will get into. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. I wasn't supposed to have it there, so I apologize. So this is not the end of part one. I put it in the wrong spot. The end of part one is going to be after December 2022. So let's continue our talk about December 2022. Now, we're getting back to that bitterly cold Arctic wave, um, generally between the 21 and 25 December time period. This was a snippet from, these are temperature anomalies in degrees Fahrenheit, for the 24th of December, 2022. This is Christmas Eve. Uh, Santa had to dress very warm this past Christmas because this right here is just crazy cold. I mean, we're talking 35 to 38 degrees Fahrenheit below normal for the Ohio Valley on the 24th of December. Look at this distinct line extending all the way out to the Western Atlantic of uh, below normal temperatures. The Arctic front is so clearly evident here um, if I was out over the waters over the western Atlantic, it would have been pretty cool because there would have been Arctic sea smoke, no doubt about it, um, where we see smoke coming up off the warmer waters of the Gulf Stream. But this was impressive stuff here from um, eastern Montana. Look at a good chunk of the eastern U.S. is just way below normal. It's not even close. And then this was the upper air pattern on the right for that same time period for Christmas Eve. Look at this. Impressively, um, anomalously low heights. Here, the upper low across parts of New York State, and then just oh my goodness, it's like a it's like a bowling ball right here of just dense Arctic air um, extending all the way down to the Ohio Valley and Mid Atlantic. This this is just impressive. You did see a little bit of ridging there associated with that positive PNA in late December, right here across the Western U.S. Heating demands were pretty significant across the Eastern U.S. for late December because of this Arctic outbreak. Here is a more local look at December, um, daily temperature departures uh, for December 2022 for Virginia Beach. Um, I calculated these, you know, I'm doing some studies right now uh, looking at past winters for this area and um, determining what the ratio is of above normal to below normal winter days. I'm really curious on that. Um, but anyway, I just started keeping a log here of the daily high and low temperature departures. This was for December 2022 for Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, and you, you kind of see, you know, the pluses, the magnitudes of some of these warmer periods, like, for example, the 6th and 7th, we saw um, temperatures in the order of 11 to 13 degrees Fahrenheit above normal for high temps. And then by, I mean, goodness, like, the morning of the 7th, the temperature, the low temperature was 23 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. Um, so it allows me to identify areas where we have above normal or much below normal temperatures. So here's your bitterly cold period, the 24th and 25th for Virginia Beach. Um, Christmas Eve day, 25.7 degrees Fahrenheit below normal high temperature and a 22.6 degrees Fahrenheit below normal low temperature on Christmas Eve. By Christmas day itself, uh, the cold eased a little bit, still 13.7 degrees Fahrenheit below normal on Christmas day itself for Virginia Beach 2022 and then 14.5 degrees Fahrenheit below normal at night. Um, and then look what happens here by the end of the month. This is just ridiculous. Uh, that strong Pacific jet just pushed milder Pacific air from west to east coast. <clears throat> so by the time we got to um, the 30th of December, we had a 21.4 degree above normal high temperature for the 30th of December. And then by the time we got to ringing in the new year, um, the low temperature was 19.7 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. Just incredible. Um, here is the overall summary. Um, so for the month of December, we had 15 days below average high temps, and then we had 16, 16 days in which we had above normal high temps. So it really wasn't that much of a difference between above and below normal days for high temperatures for December 2022, pretty even. Uh, low temperatures, on the other hand, we saw 21 days in which we saw below average low temperatures in December 2022, and we only had 10 days with above average low temperatures. Here are some more statistics for December 2022. Uh, the mean temperature departure actually finished 2.3 degrees Fahrenheit below normal for Virginia Beach. 
Um, the mean precipitation departure for the month was just slightly below normal at one one hundredth of an inch. Uh, it was the coldest Christmas since 1989, so that was a pretty impressive stat. And we saw that strongly negative NAO pattern set up, high latitude blocking, and warmer than normal temps across the high latitudes. Uh, and then we saw, you know, that bitterly cold air mass around Christmas, and then the extremely strong Pacific jet took over, and it made that it kept that bitterly cold air very short lived for the eastern U.S. Here is that fire hose Pacific jet stream. Um, look at this by early January. This was this was the jet uh, on six January twenty twenty three. This thing, look at these storm systems. They're just lined up uh, heading towards the western U.S. And so this jet just shut the Arctic, the Arctic faucet off, basically. All the Arctic air stayed up here. Um, and we had milder Pacific air flood the country from west coast to east coast. Look at the impressive nature of this satellite image here on the right. This was um, Wednesday, the 4th of January, 2023. Look at this thing. This is like a textbook um, satellite meteorology picture, satellite meteorology course picture, a book. Um, you know, the deformation band back here, and then you got this frontal band extending all the way out, well away from how this very intense cyclone in the middle latitudes. Uh, just really impressive look. Um, yeah. All right, now I'm finished with part one. I can't apologize for the confusion there. Part two, we're going to take a look at the upper air pattern for January of 2023. Uh, there were some teasing periods in here for potential winter weather, but it just did not materialize for the east. Um, so we'll take a look at upper air patterns. We'll take a look at temperature anomalies again in January, um, as well as the teleconnections, the um, sea surface temperature anomalies, the water temps in 3.4, the Nino 3.4 region, as well as the vortex condition and some other highlights. Um, but I will cover that in my next video. Um, until next time, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, uh, hopefully it serves as a historical archive of what happened. That was my goal in constructing this um, particular presentation. That's it for part one, everybody. Take care. Until next time, God bless everyone.